As the threat landscape continues to evolve and cyber attacks become increasingly sophisticated and expensive, many organizations struggle to keep pace with the demands of effective security monitoring and incident response. And the reality is the traditional approaches to security are often cumbersome, resource intensive, and ill-suited to detect and respond to modern threats in real time. Enter Arctic Wolf Networks, a leader in the rapidly growing market for cloud-based security operations solutions. And under the leadership of CEO Nick Schneider, Arctic Wolf is one of a growing number of firms pursuing a modern approach to security operations, leveraging cloud-native technology and human expertise to provide continuous monitoring, detection, and response capabilities to organizations of all sizes. With its concierge-level service platform, Arctic Wolf aims to tip the balance in favor of defenders and arm them with the expertise and tools they need to defend against modern cyber attacks. I'm joined today by Nick Schneider to discuss trends in the crowded cybersecurity space, the company's vision, its strategy, and the role Arctic Wolf is playing to address the challenges of the modern AI-enabled enterprise. Nick Schneider, welcome back to the queue. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. How's that for a buzzword filled intro? What do you say? We, I loved it. We let's cut right through the market hype and help people really understand what's going on today and how organizations can reduce their risk, especially as they pursue novel AI initiatives. What are you hearing out there from customers? There's no shortage of pain. Where's the pain most acute and where are you having the most traction, Nick? Yeah, I think the challenges uh, continue to remain somewhat static uh, over what we've seen over the last few years. Uh, bad actors uh, have a bunch of new techniques and a bunch of new mechanisms to create harm within a you know organization's environment, uh, and customers are left trying to figure out uh, how to make that work within their budgets or within their teams or within their business. Uh, and I think uh, over time, uh, you know, those uh, entities or those organizations have found that. Quite frankly, their cybersecurity operations have become, you know, more complex than than they can really manage. Uh, so what we're seeing is a lot of customers saying, "Hey, on the one hand, we're seeing um, the threat landscape, you know, at an elevated level, uh, and on the other hand, we're seeing uh, that we have a lot of complexity in our security operations. How can we work with an organization uh, like an Arctic Wolf?" Uh, to help us understand what our security posture really is, help us to understand how to protect against those threats, and help to help to understand, equally as importantly, how to make sure that we stay on top of new trends or new attack services as they come to bear. So I want to ask you, with the rise of AI-driven you know, security tools, more automation, how do you balance the need for that automation with the skill shortage, um, with the necessity of human oversight in, in security operations? Are there examples where Arctic Wolf, you, you know, prioritizes one over the other? Yeah, so, um, you know, cybersecurity is really all about the data. So, you know, our platform is now processing somewhere near six trillion observations a week. You know, it's tens of billions of security incidents a week. But a lot of those incidents or a lot of those investigations uh, can be done through automation or can be done through uh, AI tools. And the benefit of that to Arctic Wolf is, is uh, you know, significant leverage on the bottom line. But the more important benefit for the customer is that we can provide uh, actionability um, in a basically real-time manner. Where the human intelligence comes into play is taking the insights that you garner through automation or through the platform and helping the, under, the customer to understand, you know, why it matters to them or why it matters to their business. But also, to be there in the event that something happens in the industry uh, that is disruptive. And unfortunately, you know, we have incidents like that. It, it feels like at least one big one every other month. And customers in those situations want to not only know that they're protected, but want to also make sure uh, that they're going to be protected on a go forward basis against something that's happening kind of in real time. So it's, it's this marriage of making sure that the right amount of data is being ingested into the platform, that that data is giving us the right amount of signal and giving the customer the right amount of signal, but also mirroring that signal, mirroring that telemetry, mirroring those insights uh, with a security practitioner that can help to make business sense of them to the customer. Yeah, the frequency in the news, it's, I mean, it's almost overwhelming. I, I wanna set up the next question, Nick, with a graphic from our survey partner, uh, ETR, data partner. This is data from a survey of well over, it's well over a thousand IT decision makers right now. It's about 1,500 
We'll probably get it up a little higher than that when the survey's final. Uh, but it's about their use of technology, and specifically this survey's focused on emerging tech companies, those companies that are privately held like Arctic Wolf. And this chart plots net sentiment, which is a measure of intent to engage, that's on the y-axis, and then mind share on the horizontal axis. And like I said, we have over 500 respondents in the survey, uh, survey who are aware of Arctic Wolf. So you have big mind share on the right, and, and you can see that, uh, how you stand out on that, that horizontal axis. And you're very well positioned on the vertical axis. So there's a, there's a definite intent to engage. And I, I don't show it here, but when you dig into the data, it's a lot of repeat business, people engaging further with you. So it's a very positive sign. Now, you, you raise considerably, be, it's considerably more money than some of the other uh, companies on this list, but they've raised hundreds of millions of dollars in financing. So it's not like they're without resources. Here's the question. Cybersecurity is crowded, and one could argue increasingly commoditized with a lot of managed services uh, uh, offerings out there. What specific differentiators does Arctic Wolf bring to the table that kind of justifies its position in this crowded market? And how do you plan to maintain that edge as competitors evolve? Yeah, a, a very important decision we made early on was to build, you know, not only a world-class operation, but also a world-class platform with which to inform, you know, that operation of the customer. Um, so we've built this platform now uh, that is, like I mentioned earlier, processing, you know, six trillion observations a week. It's it's processing 60 plus billion security incidents a week. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really only, you know, providing to the customer one or two actionable, um, you know, events per week. So there's a huge amount of benefit uh, and a huge amount of intelligence automation um, that has been built into the platform, you know, over time. And, and when you marry that platform uh, with our, you know, what we call our concierge security delivery model, uh, the customer really gets the outcome that they're looking for, which, which ties back to their overall business needs. And I think in a market where uh, individual tools, so individual attack surfaces or tools for those attack surfaces uh, or, in, or tools that have been set up to deliver a specific outcome around understanding vulnerabilities or training your people or uh, cloud or endpoint or network or identity, all of these different things that a security practitioner needs to pay attention to. I think the organizations or the companies that can bring that together into something that's meaningful to the customer and actionable to the customer and easily understood uh, are going to be the ones that that see them see themselves through what is what is you know a fairly chaotic market. Um, so it's this marriage of a platform bringing together outcomes onto a centralized platform for a customer that are easy to understand, and then marry that with a delivery model that allows the customer to truly uh, engage and improve their security posture over time, and then take those results uh, and make use of them in the market, right? They can prove to their customer that they're not a supply chain risk. They can become insurable through uh, the insurance ecosystem. They can make sure that they're meeting their regulatory requirements or security frameworks. All of that is outputs of having a good, you know, cybersecurity posture, and it's the marriage of those things together that really make, you know, Arctic Wolf shine with our customers. So I want to put a finer point on the comment you made about platforms. When I first heard about Arctic Wolf, I said, I, I love services. I love the, the model, the managed service provider. Uh, but I'm inferring from your comments that you're closer to the marginal economics of software than you are to services, I, I look at a company like Amazon Web Services with 35% operating margin, and they're essentially a hardware company with automated services. Um, and so, I, I'm curious as to how we should think about your economic model. What can you What can you share with us in terms of how how you think about that? Yeah, we're, we very much look and feel like a software company because we are primarily a software company. Like I said. Um, we've built this platform uh, from the ground up. That platform is providing the lion's share uh, of the hard work, if you will, within the security telemetry and data. Really what we leverage our concierge security team for is that business relationship, that final mile of the engagement to the end customer. And, and we still do believe that that marriage is really important, in particular to customers that are struggling with uh, some semblance of a skills gap. So, uh, so we're doing everything that a cybersecurity software company would do. We have a, a portion of our delivery model uh, where we believe a human is important, but the output of our, our financials is uh, looks, feels, and is very much a software company. 
So I shared some of our data. I want to share some of your data now with the audience. Here's a screenshot of your 2024 State of Cybersecurity Trends Report. It's just the, the cover. And the very first chart you published really stood out to me, which we show here. We're nearly half. It was like 48% of the respondents said they identified evidence of a successful breach in the last 12 months. So, Nick, first, I, I was surprised the number was so low. But you do point out in the study that a vast majority of the remaining 52% they sort of suspected that they'd been breached. Uh, they weren't really sure. But my real question is, the cybersecurity industry is notorious for overstating threats, scaring us every January, and the look back, you know, it's good for, for business, I guess. So how does Arctic Wolf ensure that it remains credible and transparent in its communications with customers, especially, you know, when the stakes are so high for organizations? Yeah, uh, good question. I think a, a little bit two part. So uh, on the first, you know, piece with, you know, half or over half of the customers not understanding uh, exactly or being adamant that they've, you know, had an incident, uh, that's very common. You know, so th that is uh, the entire, you know, purpose or intent of detection or response products and services is to ensure that the time frame between uh, an incident and the, and when you can actually do something about it is as small as, as possible. And unfortunately, for the vast majority of organizations, that can be hundreds of days um, if they don't have the right, you know, solution or the, or the right, you know, partner in place. Uh, and we work really hard with our customers and that is the entire intent of our business and our mission as a customer, or as a, as a business is to, is to end cyber risk for our customers. And a huge portion of that is to uh, both acknowledge that we need to be vigilant around how to protect our customers, but also around how can we make sure that if there ever is a problem that we can detect and respond to it as fast as humanly possible? So, so I think that's where you see that disparity. If you, if you ran that same data for uh, what percentage of customers over time discover that they've had an incident, uh, I think that the number would be significantly higher, not necessarily Arctic Wolf customers, but just customers in general or the, the market in general. Um, and then uh, the second piece um, for, for Arctic Wolf uh, is really around just making sure that as we're engaging with our customers, that we're giving them not only uh, intelligent information or information about their environment, but also keeping them up to tune on what's happening uh, within the market, you know, wholesale. So, so these are the threats that are emerging. This is the way in which the bad actors uh, are engaging with you uh, as an organization. We know that through the work that we're doing in our incident response business, where we're seeing those threats in, in real time. Uh, and we apply both the intelligence of an individual customer, but also the intelligence of what is now, you know, thousands of customers of Arctic Wolf, along with the real-time threats that we're seeing uh, through our incident response business. Uh, and that gives the customer a really healthy view of who, you know, how they stack up against their peers, how they stack up against the market, what they really need to be paying attention to, particular gaps that they might have, why those gaps might be more important or, or should be prioritized in the current uh, threat landscape. And, it, and it's that conversation and that ongoing engagement with the customer that I think is really important for them to understand and have comfort uh, in the in the reality that they're protected by, you know, Arctic Wolf, both the platform and our concierge, you know, model. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that tight engagement, deep engagement with customers, and of course, transparency. So an obvious follow-on to that question, the last question, Nick, is the CrowdStrike incident overnight. That company became a household name, and despite the failure in process from both CrowdStrike and Microsoft, by the way, we've, we've given CrowdStrike and specifically George Kurtz some high marks for the way they've handled uh, the, the incidents and, and their transparency, but it's still of major concern. How have your customers reacted, and, and has this anyway you know, hurt the industry, tainted the industry's credibility as a whole? What are you hearing, and what are you communicating to your customers? Yeah, so a lot of the questions that we got uh, early on from that were were really around how to ensure that an incident like that wouldn't take place again. Um, and you know, we have a, a lot of customers that um, you know leverage different technologies kind of within their environment, and that's part of our value prop is making sure that customers can leverage those investments over time, and you know, maybe over time, particularly um, you know, move into the Arctic Wolf technology natively as well. Um, but most of the customers' uh, reaction to that was, how do I become, you know, more resilient as a business? Um, and, and I don't think necessarily what they're looking for is to uh, remove best-of-breed technologies or, or, 
you know, focus on, you know, you know, spreading out their cybersecurity posture into a broader set of vendors. Uh, but what I think they're looking to make, make sure that they understand is, you know, what are the QA processes of, of the vendors that they're working with? Uh, how could uh, an incident like uh, what happened with CrowdStrike happen or not happen? What is the plan if there was ever to be an incident to ensure that their businesses didn't suffer, you know, in a material way? Um, so I, I think the market understands uh, that software is software. Uh, and that cybersecurity software versus some other software, uh, you know, will not be immune. Certainly, this was an incident that was very significant, um, you know, in a global way. Um, but but mostly customers are looking for, you know, how to make sure that it doesn't happen again, how to make sure that the vendors that they're working with uh, have practices set up uh, that would, you know, ensure or at least ensure with a very low probability that it wouldn't happen because of uh, that vendor and then ensure that as as a business that if something does like you know happen like that again that they have the means to you know react uh, and continue to you know work as an organization uh, through those types of uh, you know unfortunate events so two follow ups if i may do you have kernel level access uh, and do you need it maybe needs not the right word but do you prefer to have that level of access yeah so uh, the way in which we operate today, um, we would not have the same level of uh, access or impact with the manner in which we deploy our agent, which is a, a native Arctic Wolf agent. Uh, but we also do work with uh, third-party, you know, vendors in particular on the endpoint um, as well. And obviously, uh, they have different mechanisms with which they leverage uh, access or or don't leverage access, you know, to the kernel. So. Um, so today on Arctic Wolf native technologies, that would not be a risk. Um, customers that are leveraging third-party technologies certainly are beholden to the practices or the mechanisms that those customers are using or those vendors are using uh, in their technology. Um, what's important for our customers is to make sure uh, that in totality uh, across all of their uh, attack surfaces, not just endpoint, but network and cloud, and uh, now AI is an emerging attack surface, that they're protected um, day in, day out, but also in particular uh, in the event of any you know, specific incident in the marketplace. So the second part of my question there is um, your consolidation play. Uh, and there's a lot of sort of back and forth on consolidation. Uh, Palo Alto several quarters ago talked about consolidation fatigue. We saw from the earnings this week that it seems like the platform play is, is, is working. You and I talked at RSA about some of the survey data we had and the challenges that customers have uh, I inferred from your earlier comments that customers, you know, the best approach is not necessarily to just broaden your tool suite. It's really consolidation can can help. Uh, what are you seeing in that regard, uh, specifically the consolidation and, and the success that you're having there? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a trend that uh, has certainly emerged and will continue. And it's, it's definitely a trend that I think works in the favor of Arctic Wolf. Uh, as customers look at their overall security uh, landscape, I think the vast majority of them uh, view uh, the ecosystem within their environment as having become, you know, too complex. Um, so uh, we take a pretty unique approach in that uh, we do believe in, you know, platformization or in consolidation of security, you know, tools being an avenue for a customer to improve their posture, get better economics, free up their team to do, you know, more important work than some of the, uh, the, 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 lower level work within kind of security triage or what have you. Um, but we do it in an open and agnostic way. So we understand that customers don't necessarily want to throw out all of their initial investments or previous investments, um, you know, straight away. Uh, and, and our approach there is to make sure that we have deep integrations uh, with what would be almost every common security technology within a customer's environment and then help them to bring that telemetry, bring those tools together into a common interface and ensure that they have a single point of glass or they have a, a, a single dashboard with which to view their overall security posture, kind of regardless of the tool that is providing the te telemetry or the tool that is, you know, doing the work on a specific, specific attack service. Now, over time, generally our customers say, hey, we're getting such a good experience with Arctic Wolf and, and the platform and having a single, you know, kind of voice with regard to our security posture it may make sense for us to uh, work with fewer vendors on specific attack surfaces or for specific things within our environment. And that's obviously uh, an opportunity for the customer to remove complexity, 
likely save some money and time, uh, but also an opportunity for Arctic Wolf to expand our, our presence within a customer's in, uh, ecosystem. Got it. Now, Arctic Wolf, as we've discussed previously, you started out focused on smaller and mid-sized firms, but our survey data uh, shows that you're really having some quite a bit of success up market as well. So my question is, is as you scale, how do you maintain the quality of your service, particularly when you know, talent in this industry, the shortage is acute, uh, is only expected to, to worsen. What measures are you taking to avoid, you know, the pitfalls of rapid expansion, especially as you go into new new markets, Nick? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, clearly the manner in which we deliver our service, primarily through the platform and with kind of this final mile with concierge, uh, requires us to be really diligent about uh, the teams that we have in place, uh, how we keep them, you know, motivated and how we continue to expand them. Uh, and the balance has always been in how we leverage automation, how we leverage AI, how we leverage the platform to make those team members more effective, you know, with their customer. And I think the benefit that we're getting is that as we add those automations, as we add that AI, we're actually freeing up time uh, for some of our you know, security practitioners to work with their customers in a meaningful way. So I would actually think that over time, uh, our customers get more engagement than they would have you know, five, six years ago, just because we've been able to free up a lot of their time on some of the more kind of like diet hard tasks is, is what we call them in, uh, you know, internally here. So, um, so, I, so, so we leverage automation, we leverage AI, that you know, on a unit basis allows uh, an, uh, a, a team to engage more effectively with their customer. Uh, and then we just make sure that we have our teams you know, highly trained, we engage them in uh, different facets of a cybersecurity operation, uh, give them you know, experience in different areas of cybersecurity, which also makes them um, uh, you know, a, a, a better conduit for question and answer to the customer. Um, and continue to scale and grow, you know, that organization commiserate with the outputs uh, or expectations that we have uh, from our customers. So just a couple more questions uh, and I'll let you go. This business is inherently reactive, often, you know, chasing the latest threats rather than anticipating them. Your approach to the problem you know, is, is you got a different mindset. You, this notion, you even said it, We're, we set out to end cyber risk. And I love that posture, but what proactive strategies is Arctic Wolf implementing so that you can stay ahead of the curve? And how do you measure the success of end cyber risk? Yeah, so uh, ending cyber risk for us is uh, effectively trying to bring a customer's risk to what what to their organization would be you know, effectively zero. So clearly you're never going to remove all risk of cyber incidents with an organization, but you can certainly do a lot as an organization to ensure that you are a less attractive target to a bad actor because of what you've put in place to detect and respond, to prevent, uh, and to remediate any potential risk that would come about. So we spend a tremendous amount of time and energy to ensure that we have the core capabilities that a customer would need to make themselves a very unattractive target to a bad actor. Uh, and we do that through uh, our detections teams, our labs teams, the AI automation that we're building, our use of third parties uh, and native technologies to put together and correlate uh, a bunch of different signal into uh, uh, into a, a really uh, in, intelligent uh, you know feed to the customer so that they can understand what's happening within their environment. Um, and and over time, um, what that does for the customer is help them to understand um, not only. Uh, what they've done that has progressed them, you know, properly with regards to their security risk or security posture, but also where they have potential gaps, uh, where those gaps might align with, you know, current uh, threat actor techniques and and where they may or may not need to make additional investment or where they have duplicative investment that it would make more sense for them to kind of repurpose some of that resource. Yeah, just for our audience, I mean, the way that risk managers look at this is the reduction in expected loss. There's an assumption around the frequency of attacks and the impact of those attacks. They maybe will run uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And, and the value of cybersecurity is the reduction in that expected loss. And that's exactly what, you know, quote, ending cyber risks, or minimizing cyber risks, risk is all about. All right, last question. I ask you this every time I see you, Nick. It's the IPO question. Has the market for IPOs changed since we last talked? 
at RSA? What are you seeing there and what's your current thinking? Yeah, I think the market's improving for for IPOs. Um, you know, certainly we still haven't seen a, a rush to go out. We've had a few, you know, what I would call, um, you know, squarely, you know, technology, you know, centric companies that, you know, may look and feel, um, you know, similar to Arctic Wolf, maybe not in the same industry, but but certainly are a little bit more mainstream with regards to a, a typical tech IPO. Um, and, you know, I think we're still seeing that, um, the market is waiting for um, some additional IPOs, waiting for those IPOs uh, to be, tr you know, truly successful, uh, waiting for, um, you know, some of what we're expecting here uh, with rate cuts, waiting for what may or may not transpire, you know, with the election. So I, I think there's still a, a good amount of uh, volatility uh, within kind of the overall landscape as we head into the back half of this calendar year. I, I think next year uh, we'll see some more activity in the IPO markets. A as it relates to, uh, you know, Arctic Wolf, as we've talked about before, we're, we're super focused on uh, becoming, uh, you know, and continuing to be a, a great business. So making sure that we're providing the outcomes our customers expect, making sure that we're adding capabilities, making sure that we're leveraging potential, you know, opportunistic uh, ways to expand our market, expand our TAM, and expand the outputs that we give to our customers. Uh, and I think if we do those things, uh, there will come a time in the relative short, uh, you know, future where, you know, the market uh, and Arctic Wolf's, you know, readiness or willingness uh, to enter that market will overlap. And that will be when we, when we look to, uh, you know, take that more seriously. Well, Nick, we've been watching you guys for several years, really excited about your ascendancy and doing a great job. And and looking forward to, to reading that S1 at some point in time. And uh, thanks so much for coming back in the Cube. Really appreciate it. Nick Schneider. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube and a Cube conversation. We'll see you next time.